Well, hello friends. Today is another beautiful day to be working outside. We have overcast skies. It is in the 70s, somewhere in the 70 degrees range, and it feels beautiful. There is just a light breeze. And everything right now, this time of year, you know, I don't have watering systems. So everything right now though, is watered from the rain and it looks beautiful, lush, green. We haven't gotten into the dryness that we usually get in the summer. And it's just really fun. So we had a little bit of a heat wave a week or two ago, a few weeks ago, and it kind of put a stall on any of the spring things I was trying to do. Like I have some large things I want to transplant. I'm holding Kip's Frisbee. I have some things I want to transplant and it put a stall on that because it was just too hot. It was going to stress things too much. So today I thought we are going to transplant a weeping white spruce, one of my favorites, but it's just not in a good spot. It doesn't get enough sun. And then I need to pot up some turmeric and some ginger that I can have over the summer and be growing. And then hopefully just, you know, wonderfully harvest all those roots in the rhizomes in the fall, which is kind of the fun part. So I thought we could pot some of that up too later. So there's just so much to do outside and it's just a beautiful day to do it. So why not, right? So my weeping white is beside my front porch on the west side, and it is right here. You can see it has some new growth that's pushing this year, but this big, beautiful tree here, it is shading it way too much. So while it was the good idea, it isn't working well. Now I planted this only about four years ago, but I planted a large one when I bought it. So it was a really large, already growing tree. So I know, I'm sorry, I have Kip's Frisbee because he is with me. You ready, Kip? And that's how I keep him entertained. So I want to move this today. We're going to transplant it. I think I'm going to transplant it over to mom's. And I have dun, 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 a new Crimson Queen Japanese maple to put there. And I'm really excited about that. Now, Japanese maples can be a little iffy. They are zoned for my area. They're zone five. This one is. And that's the area I live in. Sometimes I feel like this spot, since it's on the west, it gets such intense wind and cold in the winter. I still may put a fence around this in the fall and put some leaves with it just to protect it a little bit more, some burlap. We'll see. But what I'm doing right now is you can see, I started making some cuts with a good spade and I'm just going around the perimeter. Now, usually you want to go out a long ways on an established tree. Even though this tree is really large, it's actually not that established. It's only a few years old that's been planted here. So I'm not going out too far from the root ball. I'm only going out about a foot and a half probably. And it's easy, I can tell, because there's not too many roots I'm cutting through. So I'm going to cut around, try to get as much of that as I can. And you can see this whole back half, see how the growth here is pretty much non-existent. And then you get to the front where it was getting the good sun and it does have good growth. That's why I'm moving it. It's just not in a happy spot. And a Japanese maple will really do so much better here. I love the dappled, beautiful purple foliage it has. It will just it'll be really pretty to have this here. And this will be much happier over somewhere in full sun. So I'm going to make the cuts, hopefully easily take it out. We'll find out. Now, if I can, I am always going to choose to do this on a cloudy day and a cool day because that's going to stress the tree out the least, the least amount. So I'm just going around and slightly making a cut going deep down and trying to slightly pull, but not yank. You don't want to yank anything out when you're going to pull it out. You want to keep giving it nice relief cuts all the way around. And then once it really has good movement, then I'll take it out. Okay, I have it taken out. <laughs> it's kind of a long tree. Now what you can see, I braced it on the side and I'm not going far. And so I'm gonna actually go over and into the field so I don't have to go on the road and go slowly on my way. But what you wanna be careful, especially that since this is a weeping tree, its branches go downwards and you wanna make sure you're not crushing them as you're moving it or transplanting it. And that would be the same if it was brand new and you brought it home. Now, if you're unsure what these are, I should walk back because in the back of my yard, you can see one right there, and that's a beautiful one. So let's go look at that one. So back here at the end of my perennial bed along my garden shed, you can see this one I planted as just a four footer. So it was pretty short when I planted it about, oh, five-ish, six-ish years ago. And look how beautiful it is. This one to me has a beautiful shape. And do you see how its skirt is really full? That's what they should look like. You can tell this gets ample sun. It's a great spot for it. It's really pointing up and having a great shape. 
that's what the one I just pulled out hopefully will look like once I transplant it. So transplanting something is really just keeping it like a new tree and that's what we're going to, have to treat it as. And when I say new tree, you know, it pulled out easy enough that I can tell it wasn't really ever settling in like it should have in that spot. So since I'm going to plant it right now, we're going to treat it just like I was planting it this year, meaning watering will have to be like a new tree, care will have to be like a new tree, and it may need to be staked also because it won't have any roots that go too deep into the ground to really hold it upright, and it's a tall tree. So we probably will have to stake it possibly, but it will work. So let's take it over. I think I have a spot picked out and we're gonna plant it. Okay, I'm over at my mom's now, and I just dug the hole. It's over on the east side of her house, which is where I have that stone wall with a perennial bed and the new orchard down behind it, and then kind of this is more just of a lawn area. So this is kind of going in conjunction with, I have some, this year was kind of a hard winter, this last winter, and there was a lot of a winter burn dieback on Arborvitae I had planted along the road as a hedge to create this more intimate space in the yard. Lost pretty much, I think, every single one. So you're going to notice what look like dead trees because guess what? They're dead and <laughs> they're all along the road. So what I've been saying I want to do is really diversify now that hedge. I will probably add some Arborvitae back, but it's still early spring and I just haven't fully decided yet what I want to do. So I haven't started pulling out the dead ones. But what I do want to do is start adding back some unique different types of evergreens. Some might be more hardy. Arborvitae are very prone to dryness. They do not like dry weather, no matter kind of what age they are. So I wanna start doing some other things that can take a little bit more dry weather. Spruce can take a little bit more. And so I wanna just start having some different things. So maybe if on a year, certain things do die, they don't all die. So here are, well, hello, dead Arborvitae. And here's, I've already started planting a unique new tree and I kind of want to start putting in some unique ones all along this area and this is where I dug a hole that I'm going to put today's spruce that I'm transplanting. Now this will kind of be nice because it's a little bit more narrow and it's really close to some electrical boxes that we had to put in so it's going to somewhat eventually from this area I have another tree to plant here but it's going to create a little bit more of intimacy and be narrow which is nice. So usually when I'm planting anything new, you know I always use some Biotone starter. I love it from Espoma. It works really well on getting roots really acclimated and vigorous into their new area. I am, since I'm transplanting this, going to also add in some evergreen tone. Usually I would only do evergreen tone um, the following year and so on. But for this, I think it's going to work really well to have a mixture of the two since I'm transplanting. And I love to use both products. They really have a good formulation just to be give the roots what they need without overstimulating them and being a synthetic fertilizer. That's why I love to use a good organic fertilizer. So I'm going to sprinkle both of those into the hole before I plant it. And then we're going to pop this tree over there and get it hopefully set up right. <laughs> we'll see. Well, let's hope it's upright. Okay, you can see I have it placed in the hole and I watered it. You just saw me water it because I wanna make sure those roots that just kind of got dried out from the transplanting, I wanna make sure that they have water and moisture right on them. Now I wanna backfill with that displaced soil and put it back around it and really tamp it in so it has somewhat of a firm hold. Now with the height here, you can just see, I am going to stake it right away because in the wind, it's kind of exposed. In a storm, we get rainstorms, windstorms, it will definitely probably wanna move. So once I get it all set in, I will probably stake it for sure. But now I will need to make sure I watch watering. Watering is really, can be a, it can be either overwatered or underwatered. And I think people forget that we can overwater things. Evergreens don't wanna just sit in water all the time. So you do wanna let it slightly dry out in between waterings. Now, I already know this area is a well-drained area just from other things I've planted here and from literally having growing up in this house. If you don't know if your area is well draining, dig a hole, fill it with water. If that water is gone in two hours, it's a well draining area. If that water would still be sitting in that hole, that means you maybe wouldn't have the best draining area. So you might wanna think about starting to amend the soil, starting to add some things that can help it drain better over time, which it can take time and a lot of work to do. 
but you do want to know your area because evergreens don't want to sit in water. So before you plant, know the area you're planting in. This also, like I said, wants full sun. And I actually, this, this area that wasn't getting any sun, I'm exposing to a good amount of sun to make sure it's turned so it gets sun, hopefully wanting to get some life into this area. We're going to see these branches actually do have life. So I'm hoping they will eventually skirt down and cover in the future. That's what I'm hoping for. So I'm going to put this dirt back around it and we'll be good to go. Okay, I watered it even more than I actually I showed. You want to water a new tree that's especially a tall tree or a big tree with the root ball, about five gallon at least. And that's going to be every time I water it, I'll water it probably about five gallon. But the important thing once I planted it to water it was you're also getting out all those air bubbles from the displaced soil because you can never get them all out by slightly tamping. You don't want to smash the soil in. So watering it helps get rid of all those air bubbles. So now we're going to pack up go back home to my house and plant the Japanese maple. I think rain could be coming, so this is a great day to do this. <laughs> We're back home, pretty simple, almost across the road, a little bit farther. Uh, the hole is pretty much dug already for this since I transplanted a tree out of it. The important thing to remember with a Japanese maple, again, like I said with the other tree, it wants well draining soil, but it also likes to be evenly moist while it's getting established. Japanese maple don't like extreme drought or dry weather. So they do like, I'm gonna put it in a slightly protected area, especially during the summer. In the winter it's not protected, but in the summer it slightly is. And it gets mostly shade. Now there are different types of Japanese maple. Some of them can take more sun. Some of them can even take full sun. There's some new varieties now that can really, they're really bred to take a lot of sun, which is really cool. But this one is more mostly for shade, which is where I'm gonna put it. And that's why I'm putting it here because what I had here did not want mostly shade. So I'm gonna be careful because it's a waterfall type of Japanese maple to not break off branches as I'm moving it because when they fall down, it can be easier to break them and they can be brittle when they're really young. The hole honestly is probably big enough. I will take a little bit of soil out and then I will put again in some biotone just to help it get started. Now, this is a container growing tree, which means I am going to rough up the roots just a little bit. If they're really tight, I'll do it a little bit more. But roots, you know, if they have a memory and they're really tight on each other, they really need to be broken up to know to branch out into their native soil. Now, I have really nice soil here. It's nice and loamy. It's a good, rich soil. If you feel like you don't, definitely amend about 50% of your soil with a good organic compost. On this soil, I don't feel I need to do that. But if you feel like your soil is extra clayish or just kind of rock hard and not very good, definitely add some compost to give it some nutrients. But I like to only amend about 50% because you want roots to get used to your native soil. And if they only have good soil right around them, that's compost, they won't want to push out into their native soil. So mix it in with your native and then hopefully it will get acclimated. So I'm going to pop this out of the container and we'll see what it looks like. So I want to pull you in closer here so you can actually see what I'm talking about. But if you look here, see these roots are somewhat tight and I want to actually break them up and start opening them up. Now, I'm always scared to lay over a Japanese maple like this because like I said, the branches really easily can break. And you can even take something like a small trowel and just go in and slightly break them up. See how instantly it starts pushing some of these roots outward and you can see them now a little bit more. That's what I'm going to do all around the root ball to really make sure that it's just ready to go out into the soil like I want it to. Okay, you can see I have it placed in the hole. I put the biotone down in the hole. Now you always wanna check your height placement. You can see here that I'm leaving it no deeper than it currently is planted and just slightly higher because things always settle once they are planted. And I don't want that root flare to go any deeper into the ground. You always want the root flare to be slightly on top of the ground so its roots grow out laterally. 
So now that it's at that place, I'm gonna backfill it with soil, then we're gonna water it. But you can see, see all the roots hanging around? That's perfect. That's just like lightly scarifying them all over, breaking them up so they really wanna start growing outwards. And honestly, at this point too, you can always check your placement. Make sure you have the angle right that you want, that you wanna see from different directions. I'm really excited. I love the texture and foliage of Japanese maple. They're just kind of one of those things that are that showpiece in a garden sometimes. And look at the simple lacy leaves on it. It's so pretty. Okay, you can see that it's planted. And you know what? I watered it really well. I wanted to make sure it got again about five gallon. So it really worked out any air bubbles and moistened the roots really well. What I love about this is the Sun King Aurelia I have planted back behind it. Looks so good. Those two colors, it just makes each one pop. That's the fun part about these things. My uh, Mount Everest allium are about to bloom all along, which are one of my favorite times because they just kind of dance behind everything on this bed. So this is planted now, it's happy. I will definitely watch for watering because it is a container grown tree, which means it will be prone to drying out because it's grown in a really barky, loose soil medium. So it dries out really quickly. So I'll definitely have to check this, you know, multiple times a week, see how it is. And you wanna make sure when you water it, you water it all around the root ball because if you just water in one spot, you may not be getting all those roots wet. So water it deeply, water it well, and let it slightly, you know, just begin to dry out before you just keep watering it. So now let's go plant some, um, some ginger and turmeric. So when it comes to growing turmeric ginger, I have some years started my own. Some years I just, you know, between all the other things I start, you just gotta pick and choose what works for you. So this year I ordered, I mail ordered my ginger and my turmeric. So both of them were started. They have to be started pretty early in the year to make sure they get it going because they need a long growing season. Even in Iowa, you would think we would have a long enough one, but they need longer. So generally they don't obviously by native habit grow here. So I grow them in containers because I find that's the easiest. You can that way if in the fall, you're not quite ready to harvest them. You can bring them in for a while. You can even sometimes let them go dormant in the container and actually hold them year to year, harvest some of the roots, leave some, and then the next year, they'll just replenish themselves. I've done that before and then some years I accidentally kind of let it go and I just harvest them all. And it just depends what, you know, you got, I find with gardening, you just have to do what works for you and what's fun. You know, if one year you want to do it or one thing seems like too much work, let it go. You can always do it again and that's the best part about gardening. You have to pick and choose what excites you and what gives you joy. That's what will work. So I have my roving garden cart here. <laughs> The back of this thing gets so much wear and tear because it's what I use pretty much for everything. But I have my containers here. They're pretty much the same size. I think there's probably an inch or two difference. And then what I am doing this year is two plants of turmeric, two plants of ginger. Now you could probably plant just one of each in these this size pot. I'm doing two. Why not? We're gonna we're gonna live wild this year. But I just filled them with all purpose, the organic all-purpose potting mix like I use for everything. It works great for vegetables. It works great for ginger and turmeric if you want it to. And that's what I have right down in here. And I filled it to the top. Now, these are well draining. They have a beautiful drain hole in the bottom. Anything I use outside is always gonna have that drain hole. I do cover it up with a shard of broken pottery. Most likely broken at the paws of some cats that love to live here, which I love the cats. They just sometimes break pots. But you can see it's convexed a little bit. So I can put it over the hole and it doesn't seal it but it allows moisture through but not all the soil through so i have that in the bottom of each one and i like terracotta because i do think they breathe and i do think they can control the moisture level better and they just look classic in a garden so i love them for multiple reasons so when it comes to this is the ginger and then this is the turmeric they're kind of cool aren't they they're almost tropical like you can see here it's literally ginger down that soil that now has a root growing from it or a shoot growing from it and so those roots are what we pretty much eat those rhizomes that have those little roots coming off of them and what you want to do is put it in full sun you want it to really be able to have all as much sun all summer long as it can i'm starting to get my maple spinners coming down 
So we'll have little maple trees and everything soon. But you can see here, I'm gonna put two plants and what eventually will happen is more of these little rhizomes will keep proliferating and more of these shoots will open up. So they're really easy to plant. You wanna plant them so that rhizome is just covered. A little bit of the soil in these containers that they came in was kind of pushed out when I was watering them. So they should be slightly deeper than that. You don't quite wanna see this, but you want it just to be at like that soil level. So you don't need inches on top of it, but instead just covered, just enough that it's almost wanting to poke through and you can put it right down in there. Now, these I will obviously water well, keep them in full sun. I may place them out in my vegetable garden area or out in my patio area with my figs and my citrus, wherever I'll remember to watch them because that's more the issue. There have been years I tried to put these right in the ground. It doesn't work the best for me. They like to be able to move easily and their roots wanna be able to work through the soil easily. And some of my soil by my garden can be a little bit too heavy, I think, for them. So having them in a medium like potting soil, just a good organic potting mix, I think really helps them do better. So I'm gonna pot up my other one, get this full of soil, and then we'll be good to go. So these will now get watered deeply, placed out in full sun, and this fall I'll be harvesting ginger and turmeric. Isn't that what's fun about gardening? You can pick things that don't necessarily go in your area year round, but you can still make it work somehow. This is what I do with fig trees because I can't grow them, citrus, things like that. Gardening this time of year is fun because it's full of, I find, possibilities and unknown outcomes. You have no idea. Things could fail, things could thrive, things could be successful or not. But that's the kind of exciting part and that's what keeps us, I feel like, going every year is to learn from last year, try something else, learn something this year and keep going. That's the exciting part. So as always, thanks for following me along in the yard today. I have more things to go do, things to water, things to plant, life to give. That's what gardening is. It's life giving for us and the plants. So as always, when you share these videos, it helps me so much. So thank you for sharing these around. But I think it helps other people that find them also realize this is doable. If I can do it, I'm in Southeast Iowa. Anybody can do this, I promise. So share them around, check my website, wiseguide.com for tips, for tricks, for recipes, maybe how to use ginger and turmeric. That's the fun part. So until next time, keep gardening, keep planting. It will make you happy.